Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2 The Shadow and the Blade, where very little now stands between us and victory. A few more enemies, also, uh, you know, <laughs> a few allies, more, more than one ally, uh, and obviously uh, quite a bit of distance in some cases. So, I'm thinking about that allies problem. My plan right now, as things stand now, our plan is obviously to turn on Sartosa, claim Sartosa, uh, and then turn on the Dreadfleet and claim the Galleon's Graveyard. The downside to betraying your allies is that it impacts your diplomatic favorability, or diplomatic reliability rating. Our reliability is very low, and so it doesn't really matter too much in our case, but it is worth talking a little bit about at least the fact that um, when your reliability dips, it becomes harder to get other people to make deals with you. Uh, people who are already allied with you may sometimes start to reconsider. Um, in our case, it's not likely to matter. The only place where it really even could have an effect... I guess if the World Walkers got nervous about us and declared war on us, then that, that could become an issue. Um... Because I don't really want to have armies in the north playing defense. That seems like a terrible waste of our time. But I was going to say, if the uh, the Dark Elves, wherever the, wherever the Dark Elves are on this chart, I have no idea. There we go. Uh, if the Dark Elves were to decide they wanted to fight us and they started trying to pick off settlements along the coast over here, that would be annoying. Not hard to deal with, but very annoying. But the fact is, our reliability is already so tanked. And I don't even... I'm not even 100% sure why... What did we do that dropped us to very low? I know there was some... There was a little bit of treachery here and there earlier in the campaign. Ah, whatever. It doesn't matter much. Uh, but those are things we should at least, you know, think about, keep an eye on. I'm not going to devote armies uh, to defending against the Dark Elves or anything. If it happens, it happens and we'll deal with it. So, we have some forward motion to engage in here. Uh, I hate... Dwarves. Man, I hate how many dwarves there are. There's so many of them. It's always so many dwarves. Uh, how do we want to approach this? So, Icky Claw's running short a couple of hands. So, it probably is Remimute and Queek who actually do the attacking over here, right? And it looks to me like probably it's Remimute who leads. Because, again, Queek's army is, like, a little weird. Uh... Looks like we can just hit the palace this turn, and I think we probably ought to. What now? I'm using the uh, I'm using that steam controller again because, boy, my arm. But I'm also looking at this and thinking, oh, uh, we might have to do a manual battle here, and also thinking I still have not taken the time to get comfortable enough with big battles to do that with the steam controller. So we'll probably have to probably have to swap back over to mouse and keyboard for that one. It's fine. It'll be okay. I'm not in, like, a desperate position here regarding an RSI or anything, but the whole point of me using the Steam Controller is to prevent me from ever getting to that point. You know, you gotta take your, uh, gotta take your joints relatively seriously. Can you not? No, he doesn't quite have enough movement range. Well, Queek does. So we could, we could lead with Queek. Queek's army is a lot less good for this. Wow, that's, a uh, that's actually... Negative. That's against us. That's wild. The idea that Ungrim Iron Fist is ready to defend this settlement. So there is one. Man, maybe it's not that wild. I'm looking. I'm looking at the um, looking at the siege weapons and stuff here. Like the part of his thing where he's all his army is made up of giant slayers is pretty bad for defense. Giant slayers are not good at holding positions. They die very quickly. Um, but the settlement garrisons actually. Kind of a pain. It's a fair amount of iron breakers and just a lot of guns. We might actually want to uh, build some proper siege towers and stuff here. It would take us three turns to build six siege towers. That is maybe not necessary. But we should probably build some siege towers. Just to give our troops a way to approach without getting totally shredded by all of their stuff. But yeah, actually this is looking like it's uh, maybe going to be a little on the difficult side. Now we do have Remute, who is a uh, a good spellcaster. Man, this battle's gonna be such an annoying pain, and I hate the fact that 
I think my number one frustration at this point in the campaign is just the the number of dwarven armies we always have to face. All right, what do we have? We have recruitment structures for clan rats here. Are we close on the upgrade? No, we haven't even started the upgrade, so it'd be like four turns to upgrade to the uh, storm vermin building. Well then, I guess I will just move to the edge of this uh, area and start recruiting clan rats. It's obviously not ideal, but... Uh, do we want spear rats? Spear rats are much better at surviving. Obviously, the anti-large is not super relevant against dwarves, but spear rats have a bunch much higher defense. I think probably their role is not to try to kill, but rather merely to try to survive while the other rats do all the other work. And then we need to figure out a way to draw off some of these dwarves. I just don't want to fight three armies all at once. But the good news is we are often able to pull off some kind of shenanigans, draw them out into the open. I'm thinking maybe the play here is we do... we take Snitch's army? Yeah, this is a good strong one. Take this army, do an underway move into a position over here, and then have, um, have this dude waiting nearby in ambush mode. Where's a place where he can... Really? Even with all the vegetation and stuff? All of this is attrition territory? Man, I just I need a place where I can stand and get a little bit of replenishment. We are allied with this player, so we are in friendly territory and can receive replenishment if we just find a spot for it. Well, I really don't want them to have to be in encampment mode. Obviously, we want to do the ambush. Um, Hidar's army is weak enough as it is. We just need to we need to be able to try to catch the enemy out, right? So let's take Snitch. Let's do this thing. We'll underway move him to, say, here. I bring pain and then we'll move Hidar close and... I keep seeing the I keep seeing the little skull disappear briefly and it's because I'm mousing over terrain that is not even pathable. So there is... Hold on a second. It looks like the the areas with the trees that are on the other side of the border are all good. Oh, this region has cursed mist. That's why the attrition is so bad. I hadn't even thought about it. You can see it. This is a pirate thing. They have they have filled it with cursed mist. Uh, I believe that's a thing they do with a ritual. Well, I wanted to stand in the friendly territory. Apparently, we're going to have to do this by standing outside. And this this way, at least, we're not taking any attrition damage. But obviously, I wanted to be getting replenishment. Our allies are not doing things in a way that are very conducive to us assisting them, and they're not they're also not getting the job done themselves. Which is kinda like the worst of all possible approaches. Can you if I put you in underway mode, would you be able to get beyond the mountains? Hmm. No. Okay, so we may as well do the march. We'll just have him wrap around the top here. We have enough armies on the south side. We we can split these guys northward. All right, so we'll come at them in two groups of three. They have four full stacks and one that they're just starting to recruit. So superior numbers, we just... Man, it's just gotta work, you know? All right, and then over here, uh, you should probably kill Duke Gerard. I don't know what his deal is, but he is not allowed to... He's not allowed to be in our territory. Alright, this guy is not a problem. Oh no! Okay, he didn't quite make it far enough away to survive a turn. The worst thing is when you go after somebody like this and they, they get away. And then on their turn, they just run over and attack a settlement. It's like a terrible waste of your time dealing with that. Okay, what do you want next? You have your bell, you have your immortality. I believe we have... Yeah, we have all the spell stuff we need. So I guess more points of respected and feared is what's next. Also, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with the scroll wheel right now. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, there's a spot just north of the furthest bit of movement that for some reason does not suffer attrition. Okay, what were you doing? You were just doing assassin stuff, but if I wanted to fold you into an army, because we don't need so many assassins anymore. And he has lots of... He has, an opportun he has full opportunist, which is not great. But he has lots of fighty assassin traits. I'm just saying, we know that Stunkrich has, a, um, has an opening in his army, right? So maybe what we want to do is fill that with one of these two guys? Yeah, like maybe we have murder roll in there instead of having it be just like a unit of clan rats, which obviously is low impact. And then we can keep this guy out doing agent stuff, but we probably have too many assassins now. We we agented up for a conflict that had a lot more fronts than the conflict that we now find ourselves in. Alright, obside. One downside of being in siege mode around the city is that you cannot perform agent actions against a city that is besieged. That's a little silly. It's more than a little silly. Obviously, uh, your units should... Like, this is the kind of thing that an assassin and a rogue should be good at, right? Slipping into an a besieged city. That's totally a thing that there are stories about. But whatever, it's fine. Okay, uh, over here, obviously, let's keep building stuff. Now, we do want to start recruitment on a new army this turn, so we don't want to spend everything the way we have been. But we can definitely do some settlement upgrading. Uh, Firus does need to get upgraded because it's going to be on the front. Very important that it get its proper defensive structures going. We have a hero here. Okay, it looks like it is now telling us that we have no more unassigned stuff, so let's go ahead and... Boy, that... The maximum speed on that camera move could maybe be altered a little. Let's go ahead and start recruiting. So we have some, uh, we have some lords, of course, that we can draw in. Uh, obviously, the goal here is to have this be manned by Bilefetch, who is three turns away from coming back. Okay, so apparently we recruit new lords at 23. I mean, it just needs to be anybody, right? It does, well, not just anybody. Do we have a lord who is, like, blue-ranked? Blue-lined? Obside the Insane? He might have enough blue skill points to have the recruitment rank bonus. He does not. He is one, one little bit of progress short there. And because, because they took three points of Looter and three points of Corruptive, that's a shame. Draftmaster would be really nice to have on the, the Lord who does this thing. Well, whatever. We committed upside now. So, let's get an army together. Now, I don't remember exactly what uh, the traits on our, uh, our prospective Lord were. Wow, rank eight, huh? Well, definitely get some Gunners. I mean, I think we've, we've had really good results from the Rattling Guns. The Warplock Jezails are also cool, but they don't put out just, like, the sheer volume of murder. Let's do, like, something like this. And then we're obviously going to want some... Let's see, we're going to end up against Elves, and the Warp Lightning Cannons are definitely um, potentially more valuable against Elves because of the um, the dragons and stuff. I'm going to try to prep this army for the future. We're going to take on two units of Warp Lightning Cannons. And then we definitely got to get some melee going here. Uh, so we can pull in some units of Eshin Triads pretty easily from the Global Pool. I'm trying to think. With 12 units left, uh, Elves are very likely to bring Archers to battle. So we might want some Doom Flayers as well. I find... I'm... I'm finding I like the Doom Flayers a lot. The Doom Wheel is also okay. And there's a lot to be said for the fact that the Doom there's four Doom Flayers. They could be hitting four different archers. Let's bring in two units of those, and then the rest of this probably has to be Storm Vermin, right? So... Let's go for... Three units of shield... Sorry, three units of sword and shield... 
And then this will be Biofitch, so he is a wizard. We could we could bring one of the leveled up assassins over to participate in this army. Uh, or we could hire another assassin on, or we could just grab another unit of halberds. It's probably what I want to do. You're, this is gonna this army's gonna be sitting here for four turns no matter what. Because of the local recruitment, so that seems fine. I think that should be a reasonably effective force. With Bilefitch at its lead. And then... Did we actually get everybody? Hadar is... Okay, Hadar is this one. I'm not gonna lie, I don't always remember which army is in which position. Shife is where Shife needs to be. Okay. What's Pestilich doing? I don't know. He's exactly the kind of guy who we might fold into an army though, right? He has real weapons and gear on. He has a lot of yellow line stuff. You know what? Maybe I'm changing my mind. Maybe Pestilix is heading north and he's going to jump in that army. I think that's the right thing to do. Well, uh, we'll cancel the recruitment of one of the units when he gets over there. Because I don't want to move the camera all the way back over there. That sounds like a lot of work. And then... We're actually, like, feeling pretty okay. I mean, this whole dwarf thing is going to be a nightmare, pretty much no matter how we slice it. I am not happy about having to fight a giant siege, uh, yet another giant siege battle against the dwarves. The same battle that we have fought so many times before. We might want to consider... I'm not going to stress out too much about that one army, but we might want to consider moving Shife even further north. So that he can maybe be defensive um, on behalf of the Norskins. It's been a long time since I played Norska, and I think actually it might have been back in game one when they first came out. So I haven't actually done a... Uh, oh wow, that dwarf wounded himself attempting to assassinate, our, uh, assassinate Pestilich there. Uh, I haven't actually played Norska versus High Elves, I, I don't think, but... I would imagine that that goes pretty badly for the Norskins. They do have um, they do have a lot of good anti-large units, so a high elf army that's a little bit more reliant on like the high end dragons and horses would probably fare pretty poorly. But in terms of just like man to man infantry and ranged uh, unit fighting power, you gotta imagine the uh, the Norskins are gonna come out pretty far behind on that. So Lewin's riding into battle valiantly with an army of total garbage units. Just absolutely horrible. Not really worth the upkeep that he's paying for them at all. But it is a distraction. And unfortunately the dwarves seem to be very undistracted. Uh, yep. Not, not doing anything that will loyal or that will lower loyalty right at this moment. We have enough problems with loyalty as it is. Okay, so, let's discuss strategy. I think Seabrich is probably just gonna march his ass over here as fast as possible and take some damage from the stupid vampire mist. It's almost like you guys want me to betray you. Uh, let's grab Pestilich and have him do his thing now because otherwise I'm gonna forget. And in fact, this might be a good opportunity for us to execute, for us to order in a, uh, a multi-turn move. Uh, which he's apparently not not interested in doing. Hey, buddy. You wanna... Okay, there we go. It's just not drawing the arrow, which is unusual. It's like, yeah, sail over here and we'll, we'll, we'll pick you up somewhere around here. Okay. So let's, let's figure this out. Obviously, it should be no problem for us to crush that, uh, Kuron army. No! It's, <laughs> it's entirely poison archers and one normal archer, which is just strictly worse than the poison archer, which maybe suggests that after nine, after 18 units of poison archers, he ran out of money. So there's no trade-off there. I, I believe it is the case that the poison archer is just worse in every way. Uh, well, we can certainly run over and crush him. Is this whole thing... This is all Lashiek. Where's the where's the borderline? I do wish the line the borders between uh, regions were clearer when those regions belong to the same player. I'm just trying to think about where 
where taking over the Wizard Caliph's palace is going to give us control of. And we might just sit here. So we haven't talked too much about um, about siege because we haven't done a lot of siege. Uh, the situation with this siege is that in eight turns, the food supplies in the city will run out and everybody in there will start suffering attrition damage. Uh, in 14 turns, the settlement will just give up entirely. That never happens. Uh, when the AI gets down to the turn before they would start to take damage, the garrison will attack you. Uh, I believe that is true without exception, uh, just because, obviously, like the situation's not going to get any better for them than it is at that moment. But I think it, it almost never happens. Basically, like there, there's almost never a good reason to do a holdout for that period of time. So we need to decide here what our plan is for Lashiak. They're starting to recruit a fourth stack. Because dwarves have infinite money always. And we need to figure out... It would be very easy for us to write up on, on Luem, but if we do that, uh, we're going to get jumped by dwarves. We could have two armies ride over, attack Luen, and then have one of them potentially fall into ambush mode. And we could try to just catch one of the dwarven stacks out, coming to uh, coming to attack us. No. If we were to successfully execute an ambush and kill one of these guys without taking too many losses, then they would follow up by attacking us with the other two stacks. No would do this. Which honestly is still not that, like, that's not that good of an outcome for us. We really need to be far enough away that after we execute the ambush, we can fall back when the other armies try to attack us. Alright, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to put Hadar into encampment mode so that he can try to recover a little bit. Snitch is going to switch to ambush. And we're going to hope that we don't get any nonsense happening like we got last time with the dwarf army um, getting to chase us backwards through them instead of away from them because that could be very inconvenient and i'm actually have to, I'm, I'm gonna have seep rich uh, back off a little bit oh, hold on let me let me have him do this in oh i spent all his movement already this turn i probably moved him too close for this they're, they're less likely to be drawn forward because they can see that we have another army there oh well i think our plan on this to be clear is to wait. Basically, we, we really need either the dwarves to venture out or Luen to move forward a little bit more. Or, you know, there's. I don't think we have a good play in this situation right now, so I think we're gonna just hold the trap and continue waiting. You need to get over here. You, I mean, we may as well cut this guy down. Oh, sorry, that was not the right. There we go. May as well cut this guy down. There's no reason to let him just recruit. Oh, he is unkillable, huh? We have we have killed him in battle twice now. Or we've defeated his army. We never, never seem to do enough damage. Obviously, this is a thing where... If I was playing off-camera, I probably would have just done the, the first one of those manually and ensured that we actually killed him. Um, but also, that's just like a really weird auto-resolve result where, like, clearly he would die. There's no there's no version of that battle where he gets off the side of the, the map without dying, so I'm not sure why that happened the way it happened. Uh, let's take out e this guy, if we can. And then we can just run up here and harass dwarves for a while, I guess. I don't know that we have a better move. Somebody's going to get murked by that ghost man, but there's not really a way around that. Out of curiosity, if we bring a third army in range, and we also remember to spend this level up, will it give us a more favorable auto-resolve result? What would, we, what would we take at this point? I mean, I guess Concealment Bombs is potentially a useful skill, and also Missile Resistance? We don't get magic all that often. I'm not too worried about Magic Resist. Uh, 
Alright, show me a very... Nope. I mean, to be fair, adding a third army to a battle almost always makes it harder, not easier, so... I, I get that this didn't move the bar, but I'm sad about it. I was kind of hoping that that would work and that we wouldn't have to fight the siege battle. Alright, well, let's uh, head him back to here and maybe he uh, maybe he moves north next turn. Okay, you're good. The Eye of the Panther is probably not a particularly high priority, uh, level up wise. Well, I guess it's accessible to the dwarves via underway movement. Yeah, all right. We'll put a we'll put a higher priority on that than on the uh, on the other settlement here. All right, we are going to need a bell very badly. So we may see a rebellion here. And to be clear, if there is a successful rebellion, it will almost certainly result in, um, yeah, that's a shame. If there's a successful rebellion, it will almost certainly, uh, result in this faction coming back to life. Are we on uh, four turns away from dominating scheme? That is a shame. Obviously, I do not want to have to turn around one of my, uh, one of my armies. Oh, well, that's embarrassing. But it, we may be in a situation here where we have to maybe think about sending an army back. I don't really want those uh, those elves rebuilding. And once we get that uh, bell up, obviously, everything's going to be fine. All right, it, we have 30,000 gold left. There's no way it is correct to end the turn. Yeah, I mean, there's buildables everywhere. Uh, here, we may as well build the bell. It's a little bit more money. That's a little bit more money. And then... Uh, does this produce cash? 60. 60 is pretty bad. Uh, so we can get 100 out of any of the purple buildings. And I think that, that beats anything out of any of the reds, right? Of course, the benefit of running one of the purple buildings... Uh, the, the benefit of doing a red building over a purple is that it's going to be very expensive to build any of these up. Yeah, look at that. 20,000 gold. What a nightmare. Uh, do any of these do anything, like, super helpful? I guess I didn't realize that these ones gave public order. Well, that'll do. Alright, let's just keep... Upgrading stuff all over the place. Yeah, produce for me some of this stuff and, you know, also some of that stuff. Castle Beston, we can. Let's see, we're all good on green buildings. Uh, one of these. Turns out we're going to be doing a lot of that now. Okay. Hopefully... We, we're we're going to turn around whichever army is furthest to the east. I believe it's the one that just had the assassin join. To put down the elf rebellion. And hopefully that'll be the last time we have to do that down in the desert. It seems like we've got public order under control in most of the places pretty quickly. I feel like it's been a little bit less, um, a little bit less rebellion prone than some of our other fast conquest areas. In particular, the, um... Like, taking over Bretonia and the Empire. I remember being a real nightmare. Although, at this point, some of that happened so long ago, <laughs> I don't even feel certain. You guys gonna... Oh, they're gonna go for it. Alright, the ambush happened. We take the nice, clean ambush win. We, of course, devour as many dwarves as we can. Listen, dwarves are good eaten. And then they still have so many dwarves at that settlement that I don't even feel like we've really softened it up that much. But it looks like they spent all of the movement on the the uh, on uh, Gromny, whatever his name is, uh, his army, and that is really good news for us. So we'll get to consume a second army for free, and then hopefully, because Lashiak doesn't have walls or a proper garrison, hopefully that will be enough to let me break through that. We are, of course, being assaulted by angry Frenchmen. It is non-stop with these guys, just like riding horses into the middle of my camp and slapping everybody. 
That's what it's gotta be, right? The, the knight just rides into your camp. He, he yells some stuff in a thick Bretonian accent. Nobody can understand him. He's throwing things. He's kicking over tents and pots. And everybody's just like, who is this dude? What is his problem? Uh, Hedar, congratulations. You are a boom master. Plus 5% damage for the most common siege units. It's actually a pretty cool. Alright, Obside has been wounded. It's a shame. What does this effect do? Construction down for all buildings. Oh, cool. Not a uh, not a big deal. We wow, six six bell polishers that turn. Okay, hit our leveled up at some point, and he needs uh probably not mutagenic elixirs. I don't believe he has gutter runners, so. I mean, at this point, we could start working on some blue line stuff. But I think it's unlikely to matter much, so we probably take more red. Let's, um, what's the composition of his army right now? Well, it's a little goofy. Uh, obviously, this is not the way we're intending it to stay. And we can, we can take Blastmaster. Blastmaster will be fine. So. They still have three armies over there. Apparently he had... Two skill points. Uh, they still have three armies over there, but between the three of them, I think it's only about one real army worth of troops. Or maybe it may be a little bit more. What is the next most important spell for you? Fighting dwarves, it's probably wither, but we're about done with the dwarves, it looks like. I think this is, this is going to break in a pretty serious way. You know, why don't we take Blessed with Filth? I want to I wanna get the, uh, the third point in that, the reduced cost version, as soon as possible. Because you can just keep that thing rolling pretty much forever. And it provides you with a cheap low cooldown spell to keep triggering your um, your passive casting bonus. Alright, so let's get you out of this mode and... Please hit the ambush. Yeah. We didn't need it there, but that definitely lessened the damage we, uh, we would take. So what do they have over here? They have, the, I think it's the one army that was nearly a full stack. Yeah. Can we see what this is yet? We have guys close by. Alright, it's a ton of cannons. Then... So Kazador Hammerfist is the one in the settlement. We could potentially get offensive ambushes off on everybody else. That bodes very well for us. Breaking Lashiak doesn't solve our dwarf problem, but it gets us real close. Uh, and then Seabrich is in the area, and his army is... Oh, hey, they, uh, they dispensed with the mist. That's nice. His army's a little more torn up than I would like. So maybe we won't... Um... You know what? Grab this. Okay. Yeah, maybe he won't uh, run in here like I was thinking he was going to. Also, Rapunz de Leoness is sailing in. Is her army looking any better? Hard to tell. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be seeing Bretonian ships sail across from uh, from over there Please. until the job is done. So we probably do want Snick to, to lead these battles, but I'm uh, definitely thinking we're gonna see his um, his Death Runners die if we do any more auto resolves, which is a shame. I, bring pain, death. I don't know if it's enough of a shame to make me want to do manual resolves on these battles, because again, we like. We have done this thing an awfully large number of times. Hey, you know what? They're doing all right. All right, so that'll break those guys off. And that means, with that nearly a stack dead, they now have considerably less than a full stack to play defense here. Uh, if I were to just ram you into the city... No, we're not. Hadar is not quite close enough. So hold on, we'll do this. We we would totally win that battle. That army is all miners, which are definitely the worst dwarven infantry. It's actually kind of funny though. Like miners are pretty bad, uh, pretty bad at actual combat, but they have a very high armor piercing damage uh, ratio. And as far as melee units go, it's not like they're objectively bad. They're just bad relative to other dwarven melee, all of which is very, very, very good. Dwarves are a powerful force. You you sacrifice some things. There's not a single fast unit in the whole army. Oh, that's not true. They have um, 
uh, what do you call it? They have the gyrocopters. But pre-gyrocopters, which are a top-tier unit. Not a single fast thing in the whole army. Uh, I think we'll demolish this because we'd probably be better off with the pottery building. Obviously repair that. Dwarves are a lot of fun to play, though. If you're if you're looking for a... If you're trying to learn the game and you're looking for a faction to learn with, I might, I might say dwarves are a good way to go. Uh, they give you a lot of room for error and the strategies for winning battles with dwarves are relatively straightforward. The downside is that I don't really feel that they're particularly flexible. They're kind of like good at one thing and you just got to do that thing all the time. But it's a it's a good effective thing and it's hard to screw it up. Okay, Seabridge may as well run over here cuz this is also friendly territory now. No, don't sorry. Don't trade units with him. Just hang out nearby. Okay, now we can bring a really overwhelming <laughs> number of units to the Ungram Iron Fist battle. And we shall, or not. Uh, we may as well press on Sorcerer's Islands as well. Have we used our... No, we have not used our movement yet. Come over here and show me... Wow. Apparently we don't need him to show me that. And look at that. Somehow Ikiklaw and Vomik ended up back together again. Name a more iconic duo. Go ahead, I'll wait. It's actually going to take several turns for him to get back over to the forest. We might see that rebellion happen before Stunkridge can get back there. Well, even if we do end up losing the... Uh, even if the rebellion army spawns and it does successfully take the tree, obviously it's not a long-term issue. Okay, you're just going to go into normal stalking stance so that you're not tired when the battle happens. Actually... We're going to go into Encampment Stance, because I would like to heal a little bit before the battle happens. And I think we're going to wait one more turn. Yeah, I'm going to let the I'm gonna let the second group of things finish. Do we want a ram? Uh, probably... We're in a situation here where I don't think we actually have the advantage going in over the walls. In a lot of these battles, it has been to our benefit to keep the fight on the walls as much as possible, because the enemy army is running... Um, you know, big lizard man monsters who can't climb, or a lot of horses or something. Uh, these dwarves can take us on the walls the whole way. So probably it would be a good idea to have a ram, uh, just for the purposes of being able to get our gunners into the, uh, into the fight. We'll go one ram. I think that's probably better than siege towers four through six. Okay, uh, and then... Well, Leoncor is here, and he could step in on us. Why don't you group up a little tighter? Yeah, he could move in on us. I'm not necessarily terrified. Especially given what his army is made of. I think we're probably okay. Alright, Staden, you know your deal. And Telepheim has capped out and could definitely use some real buildings. It turns out we're still making a lot more money, uh, even with that other army, than I thought we were going to be at this point. We didn't have anywhere near this income before losing the other army. Well, I guess we've already lost the part of the uh, the part of our income that we lose from just having the army around, but we're actually not paying for almost any of the units yet, right? So that income figure is going to fall quite a bit over the next couple of turns. Uh, Rel probably just continues this way. I mean, Rel's job is going to probably be to sail across the ocean. He, he and another assassin or two are going to have to go scout the uh, Bretonian settlements on the other continent. Oh, and I hit the I hit the do whatever it says down here button before actually looking at what it said down there. Because there are definitely some uh, some upgrades that we should have made. Very, very slowly. He continues forward. He's got three turns of movement left before he's even close to the city. And I think, is it this coming turn that we get Biofitch back? We're not getting anything out of that, uh, our interim lord. He's not providing any bonuses to our, uh, to our recruitment or anything, so we may as well just kick him out as, as soon as it is possible to do so. That's a pretty big group of lizard men. I think the Pillars of the Unseen Constellation are probably in a small amount of trouble. 
God, think about it. Think about banishing the dwarven ancestors to the winds. It's almost over. And for a while there, I was thinking, hey, maybe, maybe we could just, like, coexist with the dwarves. Obviously not, like, be friends, but... They like clan mores, we like clan mores, maybe this could be a weird, uneasy friendship. Okay, so she's just going straight for Phyrus. In fact, they're all going straight for Phyrus. Well, that's interesting. We probably... Hmm. What is, gonna be, what is going to be the way that we want to deal with that? Well, I mean, it shouldn't be a big deal for the Sartosans to break up some of that push. And Biofitch is ready. Uh, I just don't, don't care about this armor or the research rate, for obvious reasons. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and replace this guy. Upside the Insane. Pick up Draftmaster so you'll be useful next time we need you for this. Uh, but for right now, I'm sorry, buddy. I also just, like, I was on that screen already. This is the button I want. Great job keeping it warm for us, though. Also, Biofitch has been one of our lords for, like, the entirety of the game. I was going to say, he's not really level 39, is he? It was showing him at 39 on that menu. No, this makes way more sense. All right, uh, don't, don't bother recruiting those guys. So he'll be in the water really soon, and Biofitch's army is going to be moving pretty quickly. It's entirely possible that... He'll get to Phyrus, like, the turn after Rapunz attacks it. So we could just let her take it. What is, it, what is the status of the... Okay, next turn it hits tier 3. So it has a little bit of a garrison. We still don't know what's in her army. Alright. Uh, where is my nearest agent? We don't really have any. Okay. Probably we don't need all three of us to head south. So why don't we have one of these armies move up this way? We'll try to catch... Oh, here, I'll help you out with this. I feel bad for them. That was a Skaven rebel army, which means that, you know, we've, we're causing problems for them with our very high level of Skaven corruption in the area. So, I couldn't, couldn't help but feel a tiny bit responsible there. Is Luan's army really all the way up here? Hmm. Okay, well, we have an army coming down from the south, we have an army coming up from the north. We'll get that under control. And you two are... Hmm, are we going to just throw additional bodies at this? Because we can probably win this battle now. Yeah, just continue the siege for the moment. I'm thinking about having... Let's have Icky Claw and Vomik turn around. These other two armies can be the ones who go after Sorcerer's Islands. I'm kind of curious if we put two more armies in, uh, in reinforcement range, if that will give us a better auto-resolve. Because at some point, like, you totally can just win a battle by having more fresh troops than your opponent can kill. They call it the, uh, the Zap Brannigan. It's a time-honored and tested strategy. The thing about the uh, the human arm, or in this case the dwarven arm, is that it gets tired eventually. You can only pull the trigger so many times. And yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna ride on them super hard. I'm not gonna try any shenanigans here. So Sorcerer's Islands has twelve units in the garrison. This is not a real stack of dudes. Why do they keep doing this? What what happened to the Coronian AI? They're poor brains. They've just been shattered. I was looking for uh, looking for heroes here. Okay, so there's nothing nothing actually to assassinate in any of these armies. I guess go assault those units. Who knows? Maybe it'll be relevant. How much damage did you actually do there? Okay, that's that's more than they replenish in a single turn. It's not a lot more, but it's something. Stunkrich, uh, it actually probably 
It might be fastest to go via the water here. Because the Sudenberg and the Plain of Tuskers both having proper docks means that you're not paying a movement penalty to get in the water. So as silly as it seems, a short naval voyage does let us continue moving in a straight line. Uh, nothing is going to be gained by you fighting with the ghost, uh, ghost dad. And then... I guess that's it, so let's... Spend some time fixing some buildings up. Obviously, this is a lot of money. We could hire another army on with it, but at a certain point, you're, um, you experience, uh, what do you call it? Diminishing returns. You experience diminishing returns from having more armies, you know? Like, there's not really a benefit. I think we've got really good coverage, and the game only wants to... will only give you increases in military strength for so many armies at once, you know? Oh, also, I didn't actually pull the trigger on that dwarf attack. Hold on. <laughs> we should probably do that. I moved the armies down into position. And I was just like, will this give me a good auto-resolve? You know what? I'll just take it. I'm tired of dwarves. I'm tired of this siege. Uh, yeah, it's a shame we can't take this at level 3, but this is fine. We have defeated Ungram Iron Fist. We have destroyed Karaza Karak, and I am so done with these dudes. And some of you out there are saying, well, you know, SB, it might have been good to have, like, a climactic battle for your for your longtime foes. And I hear what you're saying, but let me counter with this. That would be to, uh, to show them respect in any kind of way at all, which is a thing I'm not interested in doing. I hope all of them are in whatever the dwarven version of hell is. Alright, next turn we'll ride out and we will overwhelm the Sorcerer's Islands with far, far, far too much, uh, far too many bodies. Well, uh, you can take on two new Death Runners. And then, uh, who has un who has unassigned skill points? Famic. It's 32. I mean, we're going to end up with every yellow skill point. Okay, let's just go down the settlement line. Let's go down the, the big list of places that have a building slot available and continue to upgrade them. At some point here, we are going to actually have completed our empire. It's going to take a lot of money and more than a few turns, but it will happen eventually. A stone has upgrades available. Oh boy, does it ever. Oh, we actually want to leave that at tier 4, though, which is going to spoil this a little bit, because it's going to mean there, there are places where we will always have a hammer... I can't build this. Oh, right. Settlement already has a pestilent knave. That, yep, that makes sense. That checks out. Uh, give me also a construction cavern. In the Black Mountains, we have many slots open. And in the end, this is going to be a considerable amount of extra income per turn. But to be perfectly honest, I don't know that we need it. There's not a... I can't think of a good, compelling reason not to finish building everything. Everything that I'm... Every, every, everything sounds like an excuse in my head. But really, there's probably, there's probably no actual need for us to do this. Ooh, we get to upgrade a dock to five. A top-tier dock is the same income as a maxed-out gold mine, I believe. It's, like, very worthwhile. Not easy to do early in the game when you uh, don't have, like, growth, uh, free growth from technologies and stuff. But obviously, as the game goes on, it gets easier and easier to actually complete areas. Look at the minimap. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, that's something to maybe keep an eye on. I mean, we have armies in position. We are we are ready to defend a, a push from Lothurn, or at least a small push. We have armies in position to buy us time to, to begin to prepare to defend against a, long, a large push. And 
honestly, once we no longer have a bunch of other stuff that we need to be super vigilant about, we can probably turn most of our armies on Lothurn, and the situation with us attacking Ulthuan might not be quite as grim as I have painted it. We probably will be able to put a pretty overwhelming force up there. I wonder if Rapunzel's army is as bad as the other two Bretonian armies that we've seen here, because they can't have much income anymore, and it seems like the non like the non dwarf factions have a lot less free money than the dwarves did. I don't know why the why the dwarves had as much as they had, but that that is the reason we're seeing things like an army that's entirely made of peasant archers. Yep, the heart of the jungle is gonna freak out. Uh, I don't really care about this. Don't really want to lower my uh, lord's loyalty though, because it leads to annoying things. All right. right like snake. So first things first, uh, we need to. I must keep my holy vow. No. Ride up on Nathan Le Troubadour. Never. This is a little bit awkward to maneuver around here because of the uh, the water. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work. I walk in shadow. Where are you allowed to move to? Okay, we can get on the landmass. Yeah, the, re the really narrow island plus the way uh, armies, zones of control work can make things a little tricky sometimes. Against council orders. He's just like, decided, n no, hey, hey buddy, what I want you to do is attack this army standing out here in the open. How dare they? What are they thinking? Alright, easy ambush. Now see, this is kind of a clever move. I don't think he's going to be able to attack this army directly, or at least when he does attack this army, he's not going to be able to... Well, hold on, maybe we can. If we have Snitch move to Sorcerer's Islands, just encircle it, Hey, you know what? <laughs> if it's going to give me that auto-resolve, I'll just take it. Whatever, it's fine. Oh, wow. That's not what I thought he was going to do. I thought he was just going to be pushed to the southern tip here, and then I was going to pursue him there, and the and Snitch in the city was going to help me attack him. Well, uh, I guess he escaped. Curses. Foiled again. Uh... We started taking yellow line stuff, it looks like. Yeah, that makes sense. So we'll just have to have um, Ikit and Vomik deal with him. Uh, warp Fireball? Good to have even more spells per battle. We may as well finish Wither. I mean, Wither's always going to be good against everybody. Never mind Plague Furnace. Wither's especially good against uh, Dwarves, but it's also quite good against the High Elves. The High Elves have a lot of uh, a lot of heavily armored elite units. Looks like nobody's going to be able to actually reach him then, because I believe Ikit Claw is the fastest. Oh no, Vomik's quite fast. I think... Oh yeah, there's a little bit of red there. We're not actually going to be able to hit him. Alright, well, you just ride up. And this is gonna this is gonna provoke him to run northward, I believe. I don't actually know what I want to do with these armies now. I guess somebody should probably stay posted at Lashiak to play defense for Bretonian armies coming across the uh, the water. We definitely don't need anybody to stay in the Wizard Caliph's palace. They'll have they'll have time to react from Lashiak. Guys stay together. And then the rest of us probably head in the direction of the Sartosan settlements, because I think it's about to be that time. Uh, obviously, we have another problem to deal with first. Is there a place over here where I can avoid attrition? I guess if I'm careful, I can just underway move. I just want to make sure that I don't do this in such a way that I can get ganged up on. I'm not afraid of Luan's army by itself. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think there's a pretty good chance that he's going to get killed by the garrison of, uh, of Fyra... Uh, Fyra? Fyrus. 
the garrison of Ferris over there. Yeah, let's just stay along the coast so that it's hard for Rapons to get this close. This way, way. So we may as well start building the wall. I don't think it's actually going to get completed. And up here we can grab you and have you sail out. Stop just short of the attrition. Apparently the water doesn't get deep until right at the end of our movement range. Ah, oh, they can't quite meet up. Staden is exactly where he needs to be. Rel... Yeah, Rel is just getting in the water, right? I think there's no, uh... No reason to do anything but head over to the other continent. I guess we do need to probably send somebody to the Galleon's Graveyard to get an eye on that. This, do that. Yeah, also we need to keep somebody over here because we are definitely going to have public order problems in this settlement for a minute. Down in the Southlands, Worlds, and Mountains, everything's going swimmingly. Look how happy all the people are. If you could live in an abandoned dwarf hold that spelled permanently of beard, wouldn't you be happy too? I'm just saying, like, listen, I don't mean to sound judgmental, but dwarves can't shower very much, right? There's probably not a lot of bathing going on culturally. I mean, if you just think about the things that a dwarf values, it just doesn't seem likely to me. I bet those dwarf holds, you can never, you never quite get that dwarf smell out of there. I bet in general their bathroom etiquette's real bad. We don't need to go into more detail about that, probably. This is definitely worth upgrading. Uh, like I said, that should probably stay, and then... What else do we want to build here? Oh, we don't have a bell... Yep, it's still the bell. The bell is still pretty high up on the list of uh, money-making buildings. Probably never do any recruitment here in Carcassonne. So we almost have enough warp fuel for another bell, or for another rocket. Next turn we want to fire the dominating scheme. And this turn, unfortunately, we get the uh, Rebellion spawn. And our Rebellion fighting army is... Oh, I left him with a tiny bit of movement load. I forgot to go down the list. The turn where I forget to go down the list and go, Okay, am I sure I gave everyone orders? Is the turn where I really needed to. Well, even if we do... Uh, lose the tree and it does flip back over to elven control it'll take them a little while to build up an army that is actually capable of repelling us so we honestly we probably have easily three or four turns to get over there before it becomes a situation at all and we definitely will make that time i believe the dreadfleet only has the one settlement right now so it should be if, if we take the Galleon's Graveyard, just wait for some of them to sail away and then and take it over. Um, it should be not a problem to wipe them out. Just put them in uh, big attrition mode. <sighs> Alright, we have to decide. Do we want to actually put effort into this? We can probably do it. Alright, you know what? We probably ought to do this manually. We can. Def I think we can defeat Lu and Leonkur here, but... I don't think it's a thing that happens this episode, because we're 59 minutes in, and this is going to be an annoying battle. Because of Luen, the archers are probably going to fight until they're actually dead, which is just, like, very frustrating. So, I think this is where we're going to have to leave it off for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time to watch an army made up entirely of people who do not fight for a living get slaughtered by a bunch of... A terrible uncoordinated rat men. It is going to be the least professional battle we've ever seen. And I'll see you then.